Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. We're headed off the farm to go to my neighbor's place and he's putting up his fence. So this will be probably part three or four of the series on building a woven wire high tensile fence. So we're gonna go up to my neighbor's house and he's gonna show us how we stretch the fence out, how we nail it to the post, and we're gonna give him a good hand and just learn a little bit about fencing. So come along today on the farm vlog. We're gonna have some fun building fences, all right? Woo! Stony Bridge. All right, guys, before we start this video, I wanted to let you know we've come out with two new t-shirts. We've got the Stupid Should Hurt Stony Ridge Farm shirt, and we've got that in both men, women's, and kids' styles. And we still have the $100 truck shirt, and the next new shirt is this shirt. It has a goat on it. It's a little goat emblem. It says, Stony Ridge Farmer, I support veteran farmers. You guys ask for these shirts. You ask for something with a little emblem on the front and something on the back, so we got it for you. The same thing is on the very back of this shirt. And this just said stupid should hurt on it. So guys, if you're interested in a shirt down below, there'll be some links or you can go to bonfire.com and search the word Stony Ridge. All right, let's get to the video. We're praying for rain right now. We need a little bit more rain, but slowly but surely everything's coming along. We've got little bitty grass sprouts going on right now and we just need a little more rain. So everybody pray for rain for Farmer Josh. So guys, we're over here at Brian's and we're gonna go ahead and get started. We'll show you the apparatus that holds the wire in place and we'll show you how we splice them together. We'll show you how we stretch it. We'll show you how we nail it to the post. We'll show you pretty much everything you need to know. If you have any questions, post a comment down there. First step here is basically we just clip off these rings that hold the wire together. Pretty simple. Now the wire's loose from the uh, roll. Now we're going to take this wire right here and we're going to splice it to the next wire. And we'll go up here and show you how we started everything off. And basically we'll roll it off with the tractor, pull it tight with the tractor also. Pretty interesting process here. So we're going to be using some splices that you basically just push on to the end of this piece right here. And you'll understand a little bit more as we show you what's going on here. This is a woven wire, high tensile type fence. There's a proprietary design here that holds this fence together. This is not your tractor supply type fence. Now you might be able to get this at Cal Ranch stores out west, but you can't get that knot just anywhere. So it's just clipping off the ends right here so we have a good amount of wire to grab to. These right here are like a cam lock for splicing fence wire. The name of these are gripples. You can slide them on the wire. You slide them through the hole and you kind of get get them where you want them. This is a little tool. Now we can release this cam lock and slide it back the other way. All right. See, it will not go that way, but it'll go this way. So you kind of put all these on the, each wire and what we'll do is we'll splice these two sections of wire together. Brian was telling me those little gripples are about a dollar a piece, those little grippers. Gripples? Grippers? Gripple. Gripple. Kind of like ripple, but ripple. Kind of like nipple with a grip. <laughs> so the type of fencing we're using is called Stay Tough. There's Stay Tough and then there's Burkhart. Burkhart fencing actually comes with those little splices and the Stay Tough doesn't, so you have to buy them separately. So he's kind of getting it spliced in together. He's just kind of doing one at the top, one in the middle, and one in the bottom in order to hold things in place. And basically you just want to push it half and half, halfway through one side and halfway through the other side. So we'll put them all in, put them all in together, get the wire kind of even all the way down, and then we'll trim off the end pieces. Pretty simple. If we didn't have these little push type connectors, we'd have to take the crimpers and crimp each one together and that would be a real struggle. So these make life a whole lot easier for us when we're splicing a section of fence. Okay, so the gist of this is the first post is your basic tie on post. So we tie on and nail firmly to that post. Now we stretch the wire around the outside edge right here and then we go to the inside of the post, each individual post. The reason the fencing goes on the inside of the post is so when animals tend to lean on it, it won't push the staples out. Now there's a specific way that you attach to the post and there's a specific way that you put your staples in 
loosely in order for the fence to have a little give and a little bit of take because when it gets hot in the summertime the fence wire will expand and when it gets cold in the winter time the fence wire will contract so we need to make room for expansion contraction and for when trees fall on it or when livestock leans against it now I'm gonna get you a little close-up of the initial post that we start on basically wrap it around and nail it I'll show you you want it securely attached to your first post so we put a staple in here and Brian's come around he said don't focus too much on his job right here but we come around and wrap it all the way around this post nailing in the joints right here so that it holds it nice and firm and steady and you're going to be pretty impressed about how we stretch this with the tractor so this comes in 300 foot rolls I do believe and we'll stretch it on out basically in 300 foot sections pretty cool it's a good thing I'm here to help Brian because I'm gonna say each roll of fence weighs about 250 pounds or so maybe a little bit more now that we got our splices on we'll splice one spool to the new spool what we'll do is we'll crank the tractor up and we'll drive a distance we may drive half a roll or drive down to the next H brace and when we get ready to pull the fence tight we'll swing this bar around this bar swings in place and then these we'll turn these out from this side screw them in through here and we'll clamp this fence tight and once we got the fence clamped then we'll ease forward a little bit with the tractor get it real tight we'll lock the brakes down on the tractor and then we'll start stapling the post I was just advised by Brian, if you're going to be the helper for fence building, it's your job to speak up when something's wrong. Now don't <laughs> wait until you get to the end of the line and speak up. Speak up when something's wrong. So it was actually my fault that he pulled the fence wrong, right? right. <laughs> I put my tool belt on for the first time in about six or seven months since last I guess fall or late summer. I had to take a little notch out. Evidently I'm getting a little more girth. I call it girth or leverage but uh, other people call it fat. There we go. Ah. Yeah. Woo. Got my trusty cobalt frame and hammer here. It's got a little magnetic tip right here. So if you're putting nails in for framing, you can put your nail right there, boop, and get it started without having to hold it. Nice to have. So let's get down here and we'll help Brian and we'll start nailing up some fence here in just a second as soon as he gets it stretched out the way he wants it. It's his job, he's the boss, so. I'm just here to help. But hopefully we can learn a whole lot from him, and you can learn a whole lot from him, and when we get ready to build our fence, we'll know a little bit more about it. So you see how he's tightening this thing down here? It's just basically crimping down on the wire, and then we'll start pulling to stretch it. It's gonna be cool to watch. guys you can see how tight we've got it stretched the wheels are actually off the ground on the tractor right here okay so the science of nailing this thing up is pretty simple now when you're putting your staples in you want to try and alternate in other words put one in this way this way and this way okay so that you're not running with the same grain of the post that way over time your post doesn't tend to split in the same spot now we don't drive them down all the way tight we just drive it down snugly and I'll show you Now we'll go along each one of these line posts and just basically start slinging staples, just start getting it done. Then as we work our way down, we'll pull out more wire, tighten it up, staple it down. Pull out more wire, tighten it up, staple it down until we get all the way around the other side of the fence. Pretty cool. Now you don't want to put your fencing directly on the ground, probably leave a gap just about like that. That way you don't get that moisture from the ground that rots your fence from the bottom. This fencing will last for years and years and years, probably a 50 to 60 year fence. On the posts that are out here on the line, not the anchor points, not the H braces, we want to nail on a horizontal piece of wire. Now on the bracing, we want to nail through the knot in the wire. So check out this staple. This is a fencing staple. It has barbs in it so it doesn't back out. You want to make sure you get fencing staples when you're building your fence so that it doesn't back out. Whew, it's hot. So 
folks, we aren't going to get done today, so you won't be able to see how it fits on the very end. But I'll tell you about it in a future vlog. We'll come back up here and check it out. We're just going to get busy stapling here. I'm going to help him run out a few more rolls of fence. We've got a little bit of work ahead of us. It's hot. It's late afternoon. And we're about ready for some ice cold. <coughs> Guys, thanks a lot for watching Stony Ridge Farmer today. I hope you learned a little bit. Please, don't forget, click that like button. Pound that like button for me, okay, guys? It's a way you can give back. If you have any questions or anything like that I might be able to answer, post me a comment down there. Subscribe to the channel and click the little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video. And we still have shirts if you guys are interested. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on Stony Ridge Farm. Woo! In the land of the free in the home. Brian was telling me those splices are, Brian was telling me those little gripper splice <laughs> bacon. So Brian was telling me those little gripples were <laughs> ain't nobody perfect. You think you're perfect? You wrong.